Hey everybody, it's Webby. Uh, welcome to a horrible, miserable, wet winter's day here in Melbourne. Um, thankfully, I'm filming inside this Ranger today because we're going to be having a look uh, at the digital instrument cluster, which is in front of the driver. Um, I'm using this Wild Track, so it's got the 8 inch digital screen uh, like the rest of the Ranger lineup. Uh, the only one that's obviously different is the Raptor, um, so I'll be making a separate video for that one. Uh, because obviously that's a little bit different to the standard models. Um, so without mucking around, let's get inside, let's start filming um, everything we need to know and learn about the digital instrument cluster in this new 2022 Ranger. Right, so now we're inside this Ranger Wildtrak, let's have a little run through of some of the controls we're going to be using today. Uh, so we've obviously got the display there in front of us. On the right hand side of the steering wheel we've got these buttons here. Uh, now these are key because they operate some of the functions on the screen uh, adjusting some of your settings and choosing your preferences. We've got the adaptive cruise control here. Uh, I'll run through some of that with you when we go out for a little bit of a drive uh, because obviously there's some icons and bits and pieces that come up on the screen as we're driving along. Uh, coming over we've got the four drive selector switch here as well uh, which again as we um, change different things with the four wheel drive system that will show up on the screen. Um, we've also got the drive modes which is that you can just see there so that dial you actually twist to change your drive modes. So there's more than just sort of the buttons on the steering wheel that are going to be actually operating the screen. So let's get started having a quick look at the screen then. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit, there we go. So it's very, very simple. Uh, the engine's running at the minute, just in case you're wondering. Uh, on the very left hand side uh, is the engine temperature gauge. On the very right, you've got the fuel gauge um, and also the little seatbelt reminder it says I haven't got my seatbelt on at the minute. Uh, and in the middle, this is the most basic layout you can have of the digital instrument cluster. So it's just a digital speedo in the middle, the compass at the top to show you which way you're facing. The bottom very row, um, you've got your total mileage on the very left, followed by your outside temperature. What gear you're in is in the middle. And then on the right hand side, you've got the range left in the tank, how much diesel you've got left. This little gray circle just here, uh, that's to do with the traffic sign recognition, so when you're driving along uh, it actually shows up the speed uh, of the road that you're driving on, so very very simple. Alright, so the next thing we'll have a look at is how we use some of the controls with the digital instrument cluster. So first of all, on the right hand side of the steering wheel, this is where we're going to use and choose a lot of our preferences and set up things, uh, and it's really really simple. Uh, so we've got this button here which will bring up if we press that, that brings up the different menu options. So basically it's showing what screen you're using um, or what function you're choosing to operate. The next one along, the up and down arrows, um, that can basically go up and down your screen. So if I just adjust that, bring that in again for you. So I'm just gonna press down or you can go up and then you can basically just choose what function you wanna adjust um, or what you wanna sort of access for a different menu. So whichever, one you're in so let's just go up to trip and fuel just for a second and then what we would do to access that function is press the OK button and then as you can see that takes me into the trip and fuel menu so there's a few different bits and pieces you can actually go into or adjust there you can see just down here on the right hand side it's showing folders so that basically means that that particular function you can access by pressing the OK button again and then it's going to show you different information then down the right hand side, you've got these little white lines. So that's showing you how many pages of information there are for that particular function. So again, we can use the up and down arrow to cycle through that trip computer. So as you see, the little blue line will actually move down each time I press the selection button up or down. So there you go, it's just going through the different options for that trip computer screen. Now, if ever you want to come back out of that screen, you can press the back button just there on the steering wheel and that takes you straight back to the main display so there's nothing now showing on the right hand side so it's just purely the speedo that we've got there in the middle so if we come back here again to the main menu now what i want to show you first is actually the layout of the digital instrument cluster because like i say at the minute we've just got the speedo so let's see if we can change that so we need to press the button here and what we need to do is we actually go down to settings. So you can see just settings there. So I press the OK button on the steering wheel. 
and then that will take me into settings. So this is where you can set up the actual screen content and which type of view you want. So if we just go to screen content first by pressing the up button and then OK. So we've got a choice of a few bits and pieces there. So we can have a secondary speedometer. Um, so you can have two speedos. I'm not actually quite sure why you want that, but um, I haven't figured that one out yet, if I'm honest. And then we can have a left gauge. So if we go down to that and press OK, so that's saying on the left-hand side of the screen, we can have a digital tachometer, or rev counter, as most people call it. So if we press OK on that, and then if we come down again to the right gauge and press OK, so that's now saying that we can display the oil temperature on the screen. So let's select that. There we go. And then underneath that, we've got the option for what they call turn-by-turn -turn indication. So if you're using the built-in satellite navigation on this Ranger, it will show you the turn-by-turn -turn indication from a destination when you're driving towards. Um, so that's sort of fairly self-explanatory. Now, if we keep pressing that back around the steering wheel, and we keep going, and come completely out of there, now you can see the display has changed slightly. So on the left-hand side, we've now got that rev counter that we chose. And on the right hand side, you've got that like, oil temperature. So that's particularly handy if you're going out on a cold day, you want to see if the engine warmed up, maybe before you start towing or something like that. So that's actually a really useful function to have. So now we've changed the display to show the rev counter and the oil temperature gauge. Let's have a further look in the menus and see what else we can adjust or change. So we press the menu button again. Now I'm going to start at the top and work my way through so I can run you through each different function. So the first one is called My View. So we press on the OK button on the steering wheel. And that will take us into a selection of options we can choose to have in what they call the My View screen on the display. So we can choose any of one of the uh, three options down the bottom, or sorry, three options at the top. And then you go down to Configure My View, and we press that, and we can actually see which functions we want to show on that My View. So it's currently set up to show Trip Computer 1 and Fuel Economy. And we go down, we've also got off-road status as well. But as you can see, you could have things like tyre pressure if you wanted to. Um, so if you want to show tyre pressure, but if you wanted to say get rid of off-road status, you press the OK button. The OK button will basically um, select or deselect the option that you want. Um, so you can see that's sort of quite easy. And the way you're using the buttons is exactly the same for every function on this display. Now, if once we've finished with that, we need to go back the screen. So we press that back arrow, which is the left button on the, on the steering wheel. And we're back to My View. And then we can press it again. And then we go back to the main menu. So if we go down, we go to the Trip and Fuel section. So we press the OK button. And this is where we can go into each particular setting individually. So if we wanted to go into Trip 1, for example, so that shows us the information from Trip 1. So it shows we've driven 45 kilometres, uh, average speed is 34 kilometres an hour. Our average fuel consumption for that journey is 10.5 uh, litres per 100 kilometres, um, and the journey time is an hour and 18 minutes. Now to reset that, all you need to do is come to the steering wheel, you press and hold the OK button for a couple of seconds, and then as you see there, it resets all those parameters for you. So if you're going on a journey and wanted to time everything or work out your average fuel consumption for that particular journey, you can just reset it and it will start again from zero. So from that trip computer one, we can come to the steering wheel buttons again and the up and down arrow on this little toggle switch can then change what we see on this screen. So if I press the down button, so that will take me to Trip Computer 2. So we've got two trips on the new Ranger. Pressing down again will show me average fuel economy. And as you can see on that, that little message that just popped up there, it said hold OK to reset. So I can just press that OK button again on the steering wheel and just reset the average fuel consumption. So there you go, it's back down to no average setting at the moment. Uh, if I go down again, I can check uh, how many seat belts are plugged in, depending on how many passengers are in the vehicle. And if I press down again, uh, that shows what's playing on my Apple CarPlay, uh, which I've got obviously connected wirelessly at the moment. 
So press down again, takes us back to the top of the menus, uh, back to that trip computer one. So let's press the back button to come back out of that screen. That takes us back to the main menu again. So if we wanted to go back into the menus, we press the menu button. So we can go back into trip and fuel if we want to. We've got trip two, we've got the seat belts, sorry, the fuel economy, the seat belts, now playing, which is what the Apple CarPlay was, and we're back to the top. So back button takes us back to the menu. Uh, then we come down to the off-road modes. So again, press the OK button and we go into there. Um, and this is where you can adjust certain things or look at certain information as you're driving along uh, when you're going off-road. Uh, so let's press that OK button again. So at the moment, what you can see there uh, is the top two round gauges. So that's showing sort of the angle of the vehicle. So whether it's uh, an up and down mode, sort of back to front, or a side angle if you're going on a, a piece of road where there's an angle and the, the car is sort of tilting, it will actually show the angle of the vehicle. Uh, quite handy because it stops you tilting over completely. Uh, then below that, that will display whether you've got your diff locks engaged, which four wheel drive mode you've got engaged as well. Uh, if we come down from that, that shows our engine temperature gauge. And if we come down that, that's showing we've got 100% oil life, which is good to know. And then we're back to the top there, the off-road status. So let's go back again. So our next one down is for towing. Uh, let's hit the OK button to go into that menu. Uh, if we go into trailer information, uh, at the top it shows the distance you've travelled with your tailor, trailer connected. Uh, and then the, down the bottom it shows you information about your electric brakes. So that's the trailer information. If we come down to towing status, go into that on there. Um, so that shows you, again, angle of the car front to back on the left hand side. And the right hand side is your uh, steering angle. Uh, and again, down the bottom is your gain for your electric brake controller. Uh, so fairly easy stuff. Now, if you've watched my video on setting up the trailer information in the SYNC 4 system, um, you'll know that you can actually put in the dimensions of your trailer um, so that when you're towing it, adjust the blind spot monitor. So if you haven't watched that already, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner for you. And you can go and watch my video of how to set up and use your SYNC 4 system. Um, because again, there's a lot of information in there. Uh, that if you've only just got your new Ranger or your new Everest, uh, hopefully you'll find that really, really useful because again, there's lots of information to go through in that video. Um, so yeah, click on the link in the top right hand corner uh, and watch my SYNC 4 video. Let's go back into the menu. Uh, then we come down to audio. So there we have your choices of what you can listen to. Uh, so you've got your presets at the very, very top. Let's go to there. So if you go into your presets, that's basically showing you any preset radio stations that you've saved in your favourites. Um, then you've got obviously the different radio options. You've got AM, you've got FM, you've got digital radio as well. Uh, my phone is connected, so I've also I can access the music on my phone there as well. Um, so that's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one down is phone. So if we access that one there. So my phone is obviously connected for Bluetooth because I'm using my Apple CarPlay. Um, but this is just a quick menu where you can access um, all your call lists. Uh, so incoming, outgoing and missed calls as you can see. If we press the back button, then we come down to navigation. So if you've got your home address saved uh, as one of your favourites in your SatNav system on the SYNC 4, um, you can actually access it directly from here. So it's nice and easy. Um, doesn't mean you have to take your eyes off the road when you're driving. Um, so it does make life a little bit easier. Um, you can obviously use that via voice control as well. Um, that's another sort of option that you can use. Uh, previous destinations is pretty straightforward, so places you've been to recently. Uh, if you've got favourites as well. So if you've got two or three different addresses that you've saved in your favourites on your SYNC 4 uh, under the navigation system, you can actually access them here on your steering wheel. Then you've got points of interest nearby. So if we just access that for a second. So this is where you could go in to look for certain things. So if you knew you was in an area that you weren't familiar with, it will help you find certain things um, and stop you having to sort of just drive around aimlessly looking for somewhere. So as you can see, at the bottom right hand corner, I've got 156 kilometers worth of range left in the tank. 
So if I wanted to find somewhere and get some diesel, I can just go down to petrol, press OK. And then what that will do is actually show up a list of all the fuel stations that are near me. It will also show the distance down the right hand side so I can choose which one I want to go to. So I personally like using BP fuels. Uh, so I can go down to BP, I can press OK. And then what that does, as you, and then what that does there, is as you can see, I've chosen that BP. So it's now showing me on my map the directions how to get there. So as soon as I start driving, the map will actually direct me to that BP fuel station. So that's actually a pretty cool function. So that's the navigation settings done then. Uh, then we come down to settings. So this is where we're going to change um, the speedo that we were looking at earlier, um, which I've already done, so we don't need to do that anymore. Um, but what you can do is you can change the speedo. So the minute we've got digital speedo, or we can have round speedometer. So the digital one is what you can see there on the left hand side, just on its own. But if we go up and select a round one, and then we come back out, go all the way back out, keep going. And now what you can see there is we've got the digital speedo in the middle, but we've also got a, a, um, a circular speedometer gauge as well. So as you start driving, you see that there's a blue line that moves around the gauge, uh, obviously the faster you go, and that's in keeping with the digital speedo. Uh, it's actually quite cool to see, I quite like that um, sort of design. But it also fills up the display a little bit more, because um, when you haven't got too much on the display, it looks sort of quite empty and basic. Uh, but I actually quite like this design where you've got the, um, the sort of circular speedo and the digital speed in front of you. Uh, I quite like that. So then we come to vehicle maintenance. So let's go down to that one. So as you can see, this is what we saw earlier a minute ago. So oil life is shown as 100%, which is fantastic. Uh, this car's only done 533Ks, so you'd hope that would be the case. Uh, then we've got the tyre pressure. So if we come down to that. So this is where it will actually show our tyre pressures. Um, and this is where you would need to go. So if you ever go to the servo and put some air in your tyres, you'd need to come to this screen here and actually reset your tyre pressures. Because then that way, the system will be able to tell you if you've got a puncher in one of your tyres. So to reset it, all you do is press and hold that OK button on the steering wheel, and it will store your latest tyre pressures for you. Um, so as you can see, that's all redone. All my tyre pressures are now stored, so if I get a puncher, uh, the system will actually tell me that there's a puncher on the vehicle. So next we're going to go for a bit of a drive, because I want to show you some of the things like the traffic sign recognition, uh, also bits and pieces like the adaptive cruise control, what, well, no, what buttons show up there. Uh, but there's also another function as well with the electronic handbrake. Uh, so we've got things like um, the automatic hold function as well. Uh, and I'll show you where that symbol comes up. Uh, so, that's the, um, so that's how we set up the display with our preferences using the buttons on the steering wheel. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's also things like your four wheel drive mode, your drive modes, uh, selection button on the center console. So we'll have a look at that next and see what information is displayed on the instrument cluster when we change the driving modes. So on these buttons down here, uh, we've got two high, four high and four low, and then we twist to do the drive modes. So first let me show you with the, uh, the two high and the four high and the four low first. So we're currently in two high. If we press the four high button, so we press that, I'll show you what happens there. So as soon as you hit it, it says 4x4 shift in progress, and then 4H is displayed on the top right hand corner of the display. You can actually do that up to 110 kilometers an hour, um, so you don't have to stop to change into 4 high. So if we wanted to do the similar thing and change into 4 low, if I press that first, we'll actually see a message come up on the screen. It says we need to put the vehicle into neutral, the gearbox into neutral, before we can actually shift into 4 low. So I'm going to do that, I'm just going to pop the car into neutral. And then there you go, it will automatically shift into four low. It turns off the traction control automatically. And then what it also does, because the wild track comes with the four by four off-road screen, it will automatically change the display on the SYNC 4 infotainment screen to show the top half with the front camera, and then the bottom half has got the overhead sensors. Um, you can also press that button there 
and you can change the view of the cameras. So you could have the 360 cameras, for example, if you wanted to. Um, so that's part of the 4x4 shift to 4 low uh, using the drive mode button on the center console. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the drive modes. So this button here actually twists uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Uh, so what do you do is when you twist it anti-clockwise, so there's a display in front of us. So the first twist to the left, so it changes the display and tells you what drive mode you're currently in. So from there, if we twist it left again, that takes us into economy. Then we've got the tow and haul mode. We've then got the slippery mode. And as soon as you put it in slippery mode, it brings on the four high uh, for the four wheel drive system. If we then go one more, so that will take us into mud and ruts. Uh, again, leaves the four wheel drive system on. But now you can see it's changing information as well. So the first thing we saw at the very top there was the fact that the system automatically turned on the rear differential. So then we've also got the 4x4 screen coming up there as well. Uh, so top left is the angle of the vehicle if you're going up or down a hill. And on the right hand side, if you're going on a camber negative uh, to the vehicle, it will also show the angle of the camber. Uh, and then you've got the picture of the drivetrain there, which is showing that the rear diff lock is on. And then also, again, it brings on that 4x4 screen for us again that we saw a moment ago when we put the car into 4 low. So again, we can press that button there. We can change the view of the cameras that we want, um, depending on what preference we have. Um, so that's when we put the vehicle uh, into that mode there. So then if we come back and we go to there, so we take it off of mud and ruts. And then our last one is the sand mode. So nothing changes for sand mode from between the mud and ruts to sand. So that's exactly the same. Um, all that will change with the vehicle itself is every time you go through these different drive modes, it will adjust things like the sensitivity of the throttle, the traction control, uh, stability control of the vehicle um, to maximize the progress of the vehicle through whatever terrain that you're currently driving on. Now we can go the opposite way with that dial. Uh, so we're going clockwise now. So we're gradually going back up towards the normal modes. And then we finally find ourselves at the very top into normal. So the vehicle will then disengage the rear diff lock. It will disengage the four wheel drive system, and put the vehicle back into two high. So that's really, really simple to use just with that little dial and center console. Um, so yeah, so this one here, this is what we've been using uh, to adjust the different four wheel drive modes. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is the drive modes. So this button here actually twists uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Uh, so what do you do is when you twist it anti-clockwise, so there's a display in front of us. So the first twist to the left, so it changes the display and tells you what drive mode you're currently in. So from there, if we twist it left again, that takes us into economy. Then we've got the tow and haul mode. We've then got the slippery mode. And as soon as you put it in slippery mode, it brings on the four high. Uh, for the four wheel drive system. If we then go one more, so that will take us into mud and ruts. Uh, again, leaves the four wheel drive system on. But now you can see it's changing information as well. So the first thing we saw at the very top there was the fact that the system automatically turned on the rear differential. So then we've also got the four by four screen coming up there as well. Uh, so top left is the angle of the vehicle if you were going up or down a hill. And on the right hand side, if you're going on a camber negative uh, to the vehicle, it will show the angle of the camber. Uh, and then you've got the picture of the drivetrain there, which is showing that the rear diff lock is on. And then also, again, it brings on that 4x4 screen for us again, that we saw a moment ago when we put the car into 4 low. So again, we can press that button there. We can change the view of the cameras that we want, um, depending on what preference we have. Um, so that's when we put the vehicle uh, into that mode there. So then if we come back and we go to there, so we take it off of mud and ruts. And then our last one is the sand mode. So nothing changes for sand mode from between the mud and ruts to sand. So that's exactly the same. Um, all that will change with the vehicle itself is every time you go through these different drive modes, 
it will adjust things like the sensitivity of the throttle, the traction control, uh, stability control of the vehicle um, to maximise the progress of the vehicle through whatever terrain that you're currently driving on. Now we can go the opposite way with that dial. Uh, so we're going clockwise now. So we're gradually going back up towards the normal modes. And then we finally find ourselves at the very top into normal. So the vehicle will then disengage the rear diff lock. It will disengage the four-wheel drive system, and put the vehicle back into two high. So that's really, really simple to use, just with that little dial and centre console. Um, so yeah, so this one here, this is what we've been using uh, to adjust the different four-wheel drive modes. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how we use the adaptive cruise control and what then shows up on the display in front of us. So the top left one will actually turn the system on and off. So once I press that, it will show us that it's on standby and the distance between us and the car in front. Now if you want to change that distance to you and the car in front, you'd use this button here. So once we press it, it shows us our current choice. And then each time we press it again, it reduces the distance to us and the car in front. So it's a really, really simple way of adjusting the gap between you and the car in front of you. So now we've chosen that, the little rocker switch here in the middle, as you can see, you've got set plus and set minus. So it doesn't matter which way you toggle the switch, you can push it down or you can push it up. And then that will actually set the speed while you're driving for your adaptive cruise control. Uh, once you obviously set it, the speed will then be displayed uh, on the dashboard and you'll see it just where you've got the word set it will actually display the speed instead. Uh, so coming back to the buttons, the one there in the middle, that's our cancel and resume button. Uh, so we can cancel it to disengage the adaptive cruise, cruise control temporarily, uh, and then we press it again to resume the speed where we were previously set at. The button there just below uh, will turn on or off the lane keeping aid. So if we press that, there you go, it's telling us the lane keeping system is now on, and we've got the circle around the vehicle, so that shows us that the lane keeping aid is on. And then as we start moving, we'll actually see the lines change on the display um, when it picks up the lane markings of the road ahead. So that's sort of the basics of how the adaptive cruise control system works. Um, we'll go out for a little bit of a drive, as I said earlier, um, and then I'll be able to explain to you and show you the adaptive cruise control working, but also that traffic sign recognition for the speed limits. Now in the bottom left hand corner of the screen you can see that 80 symbol, so that's the current speed limit of the road that I'm driving on. And in the right hand corner you can see 60 with a clock symbol underneath it. So what the 60 is telling you is that at certain times of day the speed limit, speed limit on this road is actually reduced to 60. So that normally denotes that you're near a school zone or something like that. So where you've got the two speed limits it shows you the normal, zone, normal speed limit and then there's speed limit at certain times of the day when it's reduced uh, for certain situations. In the bottom right hand corner next to the range that's left in the tank you can see that little green hand symbol. Uh, that is the automatic hold for the electronic handbrake. So you can turn that function on and off uh, from the SYNC 4 infotainment screen so that when you come to a stop at a set of traffic lights or a junction of a road like I currently am at the moment uh, it automatically applies the electric handbrake and then to disengage that, you literally touch the accelerator and it will automatically turn off. So the adaptive cruise control is now working, which is fantastic. Um, we can see the picture of the car at the bottom of the screen uh, and there's two green vertical lines. So that's for the lane keeping aid, so that now shows that it's actually working. So when those lines are white, it means it's on standby. But when the lights are green, it actually means that the system is working. So I hope you managed to learn everything you need to know um, about the digital instrument cluster in the new Rangers. Um, if I've missed anything or if you've got any questions on something particular that I've gone through um, or just something in general, leave something in the comments below for me. Um, I'll answer any questions you've got or I'll reply to any queries that you may have as well, um, just to sort of clear things up for you. If you've joined the video, obviously give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification bell uh, because there will be plenty more Ranger videos coming throughout the year, um, including things like the new Ranger Raptor, uh, but I'll also bring you some content on the new Everest range as well. So there's plenty more to come for the rest of this year. 
So yeah, get subscribed, hit the notification bell, uh, and join me for further videos coming in the future. So that just leaves me to say thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it, hope you found it useful, uh, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.